There's a lot of lessons on this pay-per-view. The big one to me is under promise and over deliver. Um, because... And don't 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 do an explosive match um, without making sure that it's going to work because there's like I I said this <laughs> I said it over and over again for the last. Well, hold on, two Dave. Weeks. I don't want to sound like I'm defending this, okay? Because I'm certainly not. But I do have to say that. But but, but any when you're dealing with going. explosives, like yes. <laughs> once you blow it up, it's done. So, yeah. like, you can't really test the final explosion and then put the explosion back into the firecracker. It's yeah, like... It's, but it's got to work. It's imperative because we went through this with ECW and, and other promotions. When it doesn't work, it's an absolute disaster. I know, but, like... You, you, and it was. You don't know. You never... Like, when I go and buy fireworks, I don't say, hey, don't give me a dud. <clears throat> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you never know. Now, it was a dud. It was a disaster <laughs> of a dud. And it killed... It was so sad because... Um, I mean, there were problems with there were some problems with the show. I thought the show started out fantastic, and then there were problems that we'll talk about as as it goes on. But you know, the last thing you remember is going to be that thing, and it's like you know, I just felt so bad for Kenny Omega and um, Moxley because they worked their freaking asses off trying to have this this legendary explosive match and they pretty much oh it's a legendary all right until well it ended up being legendary for all the wrong reasons but until gallows and anderson came in they had an incredible match for the style that they were trying to work and my cup of tea but it was it was great for what they were trying to accomplish and then you know you had the the run-in that went too long and then you had um the finish itself i mean the idea of the finish was great but it didn't work because the idea of 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 Eddie Kingston, you know, covering Moxley to save him, and then both getting blown up and then becoming brothers, that was a great story. But the only thing anyone's going to talk about is the fact that, you know, they the explosion was a complete disaster. It was a disaster. But I've been thinking about this, and there there is one. I mean, this Eddie Kingston story, okay? Yeah. If they can somehow find a way to salvage the lack of explosion here, I mean, in storyline... In the long run, no, in the long run, this is good. Well, but, the, my but, point is, in storyline, if this were real, Eddie's a hero, whether it's an explosion or a dud. This yeah, guy because, didn't know it was going to be a dud. Yes. He ran out here. He was afraid that his friend was going to be blown to smithereens. He yep. covered him with his body, and as it turns out, it was a dud. Now, the problem here is that Eddie sold it like it was a gigantic explosion, Yeah, which they, it wasn't. No, that, that That's that a large problem. But yes, that the motivation of Eddie is the same, whether there was an explosion or a dud. Now, the yes. story that they're going... There seems to be some confusion here, and that is that... People, is there? Well, people <laughs> seem to think that Tony Khan in the presser was saying that this was the plan. This was not the plan. What he Obviously. was what he was saying was this is the storyline that we're going the with. The story from this point forward yes, is that is Kenny Omega built a dud. But the story Tony did not say, "Hey, let's build a dud. That'll be funny." The idea <laughs> yeah. was this was going to be a gigantic explosion. It didn't happen. <laughs> now, in an attempt to salvage it, the story they're going to try to tell is that Kenny built a dud, which is noted. That's a problem because Eddie sold the dud. Yeah. Absolutely, a hundred percent. It was bad, you know. It was bad, and it was, you know, it's just what it was. I mean, I, it's it's like it's not the end of the world. ECW actually, I I thought ECW did it once, but somebody from ECW actually told me that this actually they tried it twice and it didn't work both times. So it's like, but that's one of the things is like we all. I mean, I remember the, I remember actually the second one because the first one was so early in the ECW existence that I like I had forgotten about it. But the second one was. Uh, the first one was the one that I was actually kind of reminded of tonight. But anyway, so with ECW, um, you know, the, it, it look, it didn't kill the promotion. I mean, it was it was Heyman did go and apologize and 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 try to, you know, pivot and stuff. And look, it just it didn't work. But like people go, that's it. They're done. And it's like, you know, don't get, you know, obviously they're not done. And obviously, you know, it, it was a bad night or a bad finish for sure of what was otherwise you know there's a lot of positives on the show um and there were a few negatives and there's a few lessons and you know like uh 
I mean, all week. I mean, this was the saddest part of the whole thing for me is that, not for me, but for, for Omega and for Moxley, is that we all knew that if the explosions were underwhelming, no matter how good the match was, people were just going to remember the explosions were overwhelming. And those two guys, like, killed each other. And in the end, you know, you have people saying it was, like, the worst match on the show. And, and it really was an incredible effort. And they, It was not a... The match itself... The match itself was, was great. Good. I don't like these kind of matches, and I was really enjoying this match. This was a psychological. Oh, absolutely. They built psychology into an exploding barbed wire death match, and quite frankly, and was, if we're being blew, honest here, it blew away. And I've seen you know almost every one in Japan, or every big one for sure, every big one from FMW, including Onita and Sasuke, and obviously Onita and Terry Funk and Goto and Hayabusa and all that. And the wrestling in this one and the match, the match blew away any of them. Now, as a spectacle, it was worse than every single one of them. Well, but hold on a second. I thought that the bombs in the ropes, when they were sent into the ropes and the bombs it was, it was, went off. It was off, great. It was great. Those were good. Now, yeah, yeah, there was were. also, there was a barbed wire board on the floor. That, those were not as good. And, but it wasn't, and but worse. It was, that, but that wasn't a killer. But, but here's the worst part. And thankfully, they only did one bump, but they did a Death Rider off the apron onto a barbed wire board on that the fucking, fucking floor. Nuts. And you know what? Because the bombs were underwhelming, the whole spot became underwhelming. So that's like a double disaster. When you take a Death Rider off the apron onto a barbed wire board and people are underwhelmed because there was all supposed to be a bomb and the bomb didn't go off. So on a scale of like one to ten, you know, the ropes were, I don't know, whatever, seven, eight. The one on the floor was maybe a four, and then the bomb at the very end was like a minus five. Yeah. So it was. It's not like every single explosion was bad. I mean, the rope explosions I thought were good, and the but, way they worked the but, match but, was but, good, and the story was good. But yes, as has been noted all the way back to World Championship Wrestling in the '90s, you can have a great undercard, and if your main event sucks, that's but the, the main event the, didn't the, suck. But I know, but, but did, the last thing that the, you remember is, is what you remember. Right, and so absolutely. there was a dud, and so some people have decided that the match sucks. But the reality is the match did not suck, only the dud sucked. And it really sucked. It did suck, without a doubt. Without a doubt it sucked. Um, and I, I mean, it's, again, you know, it was kind of like Moxley's in the ring, and he cuts the promo, and obviously he's in there. You know, knowing that it it sucked, okay, and knowing that he worked his ass off, and it's kind of like we're turning the tide in the wrestling war, and um, and he quite use said we're turning the tide, you know, and things are changing, and it's because of you fans, and which is all true, and you know I'm, you know whatever, working hard, and we're we all worked hard, and it, you know it's trying to save it, and then I guess he said something to the effect of you know Kenny Omega may be a great wrestler, but he is crappy at building like a bomb or something. So that's the storyline, I guess, that they're going with. I don't like that one because... Yeah, but what's your alternative? Everyone, everyone, sees, everyone sees through. Just say yeah, it didn't work. Say it didn't that's work. That's what he said. He said he couldn't build a bomb. Yeah, but it, it wasn't... It didn't but, work. Yeah, but it's like... You can't Kenny go on there and it. say it was an explosion and he almost was killed because people saw it with their own eyes. Like, yeah. you have to acknowledge that it was a shitty explosion. Look, it didn't. It didn't work. Move on, and um, you know it's too bad because obviously they had a lot of interest in this in this match, um, and you know it's it's just that's what happened. It didn't, you know, like it, it's. I guess whoever made the 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 thing, it didn't work. So it's somebody's fault. But this was not, you know. I mean, to me, like the the other one, the Christian thing was one where you could really. I mean, you can get, you know, look, the promotion, the promotion, in the end of the day, the promotion has to take responsibility for the fact that the finish of the pay-per-view wasn't good, but it was not intentional and it was not out of uh, stupidity or whatever. It just didn't work. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows 
and your fingertips.